Good morning, Journey Church. Good to have you with us this morning, and good that you've joined us, and we thank you for being here. If you've joined us many, many times, or today's your first time, we want to welcome you to Journey Church this morning, and thank you for taking time out of your busy day and, and for an opportunity to allow us to minister to you. And uh, as we get ready to get into the Word this morning, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to seek Him, and that what He uh, speaks to us today, we can take and apply to our lives. Father, we give you thanks and praise, Lord, today for this great opportunity, Lord, again, you've given us, and we thank you, Lord, for the time, Lord, that people are taking out of their day, Lord, this morning to sit and listen to your word be preached, Lord, and we thank you for that this morning, and we pray, Lord, today, if there's one person that don't know you in a free pardon of sin, Lord, they've never accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, that today would be that day, and Father, help us to realize, Lord, as we go forward as warriors as we minister today, Lord, we would realize we're in a battle, but we know where our power comes from, and it comes from you, and we thank you, Lord, for that. As we get into the Word this morning, we pray for the Holy Spirit to come, minister to our hearts, minister to the hearts of those watching online, and minister to the ones that are here today, and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Today, I want to talk to you about uh, being warriors. Last week, we talked about spiritual power and, and how that we need to be charged up on the inside, and why do we need to be charged up? Because we're in a battle. We're in a battle against an enemy. It's an unseen enemy that we don't see, but we are in a battle. And most, uh, most people that I know of, if you talk to them, they're in some version of a battle of some sort. It may be a minimal skirmish, as, as you hear talked about sometimes, or it may be a full-blown battle. But we're in there somewhere because that's what we do, because we have an enemy, Satan, that wants to come against us as Christian people. He wants to come against the army of God. And, he's in, and we're in this battle all the time. But do you ever see or think of yourself as a warrior? You know, you look in the mirror and, and you pull that muscle up there and it goes, just like on the cartoons or something. And we, you know, it's like, I'm no warrior. Who are you talking about? Uh, do you ever realize that you experience one warfare actually uh, probably on a daily basis of some, some form or fashion? And whether you realize it or not, you are in a spiritual war, as I said, as a follower of Christ. All right, you experience heated battles, sometimes small battles, and maybe sometimes you feel like, man, I'm, you know, everything's good right now. I'm kind of on R and R, like you'd hear uh, talked in the military, or a short-term pace. But you'll be back in the battle again shortly. However, no matter what stage you're at in the war, you're still in a war. So it doesn't make any difference exactly where you're at, but you're still in it. All right, let's go to Ephesians, and we're going to start there today, chapter 6 and verse 12. It says, uh, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So the people we see, the people we deal with, even though that may be where we feel like the battle is, we're not battling against flesh and blood. But, he goes on to say, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So he's telling us, so here's four different levels that we're, that we're dealing with when we fight a battle. All right, the reason most of us do not realize that we're in a war because it's a warfare that you can't see with the physical eyes. You can't look at it and see it going on, all right, because it's a spiritual warfare. All right, the scripture said, you're not battling against flesh and blood. You're not battling against me. I'm not battling against you or whoever you run into on the street or whatever. Even when someone does you wrong, you may think the battle is against them, but it's still, still a spiritual battle that you're dealing with. All right, the person you're dealing with does not realize it. When you're doing something to somebody else, you don't really realize it. But you won't see anything about this on the news. This war won't be in the news. It won't be in the, uh, in the paper, anything like that, CNN and NB MSNBC and Fox News. None of them are going to cover this war because they don't see it on a daily basis. Sometimes I think they may help create it, but they don't see it. All right, so if the battle is not against flesh and blood, who's it against? Well, here's what Paul laid out for us. He told us, he said, the scripture says, principalities. All right, the Greek word for principalities is arch. And I don't know this for a fact, but it made me think about uh, back when I was a kid and I watched cartoons. Someone, they would say someone is somebody else's arch enemy. I don't know if that's where that came from or not, Makes sense to me, but that don't uh, mean that don't make it fact, okay? But uh, but what it actually means is chief or ruler. 
That's what principalities means. Is some scholars say this refers to the fallen angels that were cast out of heaven with the devil. All right? These are the top commanders in Satan's army, and they are demonic rulers. That's where they're, that's where they're at. They're the hierarchy in Satan's army. All right? The next thing he said, he said uh, against powers. All right? The word powers in the Greek means one who possesses authority or influence. All right? In this scripture, it represents demonic authorities that operate in the spiritual realm. So in using the phrase principalities and powers, Paul is telling us here that there is a structure in Satan's kingdom. It's not just something haphazard and that kind of thing. There's a structure there, and there's a ranking of the fallen angels and the evil spirits and the demons. All right, and you may be one of these persons, I don't believe any of that kind of stuff. I don't believe in demons. I don't believe in all these evil spirits. I'm telling you, they're there. It's a fact. All right, Daniel explains this as he's a, a group assigned to territories. He talks about, you know, they're different, different, assigned different areas. All right, Daniel was praying for 21 days, and he was praying for an answer, and the answer, he fasted, and he prayed, and he kept, <coughs> excuse me, waiting on the Lord to answer him. And here's what happened. Let's go to Daniel chapter 10 and verse 12. It says, Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel. This is an angel of the Lord. said, For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. So God heard his prayer on the first day. All right? And he says, I have come because of your words. Verse 13, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, an archangel, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Excuse me just a second. All right, so we see here that demon, uh, that a demon or demons, or the prince of Persia and the kings of Persia, <coughs> held off the angel until Michael came and assisted him to come and allow him to come to Daniel. All right, the next thing he says, there's rulers of darkness, of the darkness of this age. And you say, well, that was wrote 2,000 years ago. There's rulers of darkness of this age that we're standing in right now. What age? I believe the age we're in at this time right now. There's rulers out there, rulers of darkness. So when you see things that are against God and his kingdom, these are the powers and rulers of darkness in that age. Now, I'm sure there's a ruler of darkness assigned, <coughs> assigned to see that he influences those who uh, make uh, laws and make demands. Like, uh, it's say abortion, for instance. You can't say that come from God. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. He said, I knew you before you were even, even in your, formed in your mother's womb. God is not one that's going to be out here saying, oh, you need to go have an abortion for your convenience. That's not what God does. But there's an enemy behind this trying to kill the seed of God and the evangelists and the pastors and, and the singers and all these things in the future because he's trying to kill them out. He's trying to stamp this out just like when, uh, when Jesus was born and Herod just said kill them all under two years old. So he, uh, there was a decree went out at that point in time. The enemy, Satan, continually tries to kill the seed. So I believe that there are rulers of darkness pushing drugs, alcohol, pornography, ungodly lifestyles, and the like. That's, that is what is behind these things. It's not godly lifestyles, but it's, it's evil lifestyles that the enemy's pushing forward. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. <clears throat> he said, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites. Go to verse 10. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit, inherit the kingdom of God. So he's made a list here. Paul's saying all these things are against the kingdom of God. These things will not uh, inherit the kingdom of God. All right, so we go on to look at this. All right, let's see here. So we're looking at the ruler, uh, at a ruler over these things. All right, when you think there's one over, over our nation, 
You look at all the stuff that's going on right here in this country, much less around the world, places like Afghanistan, <coughs> places here, places there. You see all the things taking place. There's still a big demonic force when you go to uh, places like Haiti and, and uh, a lot of these foreign countries that there, uh, that there is an evil force in people that's been on mission trips. If I've not had that opportunity at this point. But when they go there, they say you can feel the oppression because the enemy is there. There's still witch doctors active. You go down in places, they say down in New Orleans, there's a lot of witchcraft that, that it goes on down in that area. There's a lot uh, in other places in the country. There's still, you, you can look it up. I don't know, uh, suggest you get into that, but uh, there's still Wiccan groups. There's still witches, warlocks, and people that practice demonic things right here in this country. And we say this is a Christian nation, but it's still here. All right, so there's possibly one over each uh, territory or state, just like with Persia and Daniel. Uh, look how many things are uh, legal in Nevada, for instance. You, you know, gambling's legal. Uh, of course, alcohol is legal everywhere. Seems like uh, prostitution's legal. All these things. You look at how far that California's gone down the road, and uh, and all the things that that they say everything's good, everything's okay. Do, do whatever you want to do, basically. All right, so we look at those things. There's an enemy force that we're battling against that's behind these things. The next thing he said is spiritual wickedness in high places. All right, these are the spiritual ground troops, for lack of a better uh, analogy. They're, they're spiritual ground troops that are down, there, down here right where we're at that are working through these things. Remember, we talked about the hierarchy. All right, they are the ones who dealt who are dealt with the most of the time. They're the ones that, that you'll face, you'll, you'll battle, and you won't see them because it's spiritual warfare. But it, it is still like, so just like the list we read in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, the worst part of this is that it's evident in the church. All right, and I'm not saying this church or the church in general, but it's evident in the overall church. All right, we have too many people and denominations that are wearing the title Christian today, but while they are uh, spiritually AWOL or deserters of the, on the army of God, they're not in the battle. They're just going through the motions. They're just going, uh, not doing anything because they're AWOL or, or they're deserters on God and the things of God and the spiritual things of God. So uh, then we wonder why our lives are not being changed and people are not being set free. We wonder why that's taking place. It's because we're AWOL and, and deserters on God. It's because that uh, one that binds us, uh, that binds in free uh, church, he's right there in the church, binding people in the church. You know, and the main goal is to stop revival. You know, we pray for revival, Lord send revival, and we talk about revival. We should be having revival every Sunday in our churches, not just a week-long service here or there, but we should be having revival. All right, if they see a move of the Holy Spirit starting, they are uh, quickly to jump into action, these, these demonic spirits that come in. All right, so their action may not be anything that we, we would consider major to begin with. It's not like, well, they just come in and shut the church down, cut all the power off and all those kind of things, and that could happen. All right, it's, it may merely start with somebody getting their feelings hurt. And, and I've told you time and time again, if you want to get your feelings hurt, the best place to go is church because somebody, I guarantee, will hurt your feelings because... The enemy wants to keep you out of church. So he'll have somebody hurt your feelings, say something to you, not shake your hand, not speak to you, or whatever the case might be. So your feelings will get hurt and you won't go back. But that's where things start, uh, in places that we shouldn't have, that it shouldn't be starting. But what happens, and once that happens, then it grows. And it stops revival because we're dealing with little petty issues that we shouldn't have to be dealing with, which is hindering revival. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 20. It says, Now the works of the flesh are evident. All right, we're talking about works of the flesh here, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies. Let's go on to 21. Envy, murders, drunkenness, uh, revelries, and the like, and of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So here in verse 21, he says, I've told you this before, all right? So when something is given to, to us more than one time in Scripture, 
There's an emphasis we need to pay attention to what the Scripture is telling us because there's an emphasis on these things. It's telling us this, and it's an important thing to listen to. So your battle as a warrior of God is to see that everyone, <coughs> everyone on these things listed, that there's an evil spirit that is behind this that's pushing these things forward. It's pushing people toward these things, and they don't realize it. And I'm not saying they're demon-possessed. That's a whole other level. I'm just saying there's a spirit behind this that runs thoughts through your mind and, 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 and puts that in there because the enemy will come against you, and he'll put those thoughts in your mind for this, that, or the other. And, and we have a tendency to carry it on through. So this is why we, uh, we explained last week that you have to have spiritual power in your life. You have to have that power in your life. You cannot afford not to keep your spiritual power recharged. We can't just do it every now and then. It's not just a one time a week on Sunday or, or uh, maybe two times a week on Sunday and Wednesday. It's a daily walk with the Lord that we have to continuously move. Now, Pastor Tony Evans said this. He said, the war we are in is like no other war that any of us have ever known, heard about, or could even conceive. Its implications are further reaching, and its casualties are more devastating than any conflict in the history of mankind. Strangely, though, most people walk around completely unaware that it's taking place. So do you realize that you're a warrior? Do you feel like a warrior? Most people don't. Most people don't realize that we're a warrior and we're, and we're dealing with situations. One reason most people probably don't think about it, <clears throat> being a warrior or being in a war, even though it's a worldwide war, is because it's fought in a place that we don't see. It's in the heavenlies. You remember, we're not battling flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in heavenly places. All right, so we're, we're, it's moving up. All right, the war is like no other, <coughs> as Tony Evans said. It, it is waged in the invisible spiritual realm. All right, but it can be visibly seen in the physical realm. We don't see the battle, but sometimes we see the results. We see what happens. You think about <coughs> the people of Afghanistan and what they're dealing with right now. Do you not, if you don't think there's a demon spirit that's behind that push of all that thing and cutting people's heads off because they're following Christ and the way they treat women and the way they treat their other people and they come in there, they think we're infidels because we don't, <coughs> we don't want to live like they live and we don't want to follow a, a false god of Mohammed. They, they think that we're infidels. But there's a demon spirit behind that. There's a demon spirit pushing that. And in that area right there, I'm sure if you were there, you could feel the oppression. But we need to pray for those people of Afghanistan because many of them are Christian people. Their lives have been changed in the last few years where it's been a little bit opened up because of our military being there. These people have accepted Christ. They could have revival in this nation. It turned around. They're fighting a war that, uh, of spiritual uh, realm that we have no clue about. But we need to ask the Lord to touch them, protect them, and give them exactly what they need to be able to reach, reach those folks for Jesus Christ. So in other words, <clears throat> you, don't, you might not see what's going on, as we say, in this, in this spiritual world, but <clears throat> you can sure feel the effects of it. All right, we don't see the battle, like I said, about abortion. We don't see that as a spiritual thing. We see, okay, the Supreme Court passed it. That's the level we stop at. But there's a demonic spirit from the, from the pits of hell that's behind this thing. All right, the fact is there is a spiritual aspect to every setback, every ailment or issue that we face personally, locally, or even globally. There is a spiritual aspect to it. All right, we, we being flesh in a, with a spirit that lives inside of us, the spirit of God if we're saved, all right, we being flesh want to restrict our battles to the physical realm. We want to get mad at another person who's in the flesh, and we want to hit them in the mouth. That's not where the battle's at. That's not where it's at. It's in the spiritual realm. All right, but remember, we are not battling against flesh and blood, but we're battling against those principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in heavenly places. That's what we're battling against. So we battle the temptation of sin, re uh, relational drama that we have between each other, challenges at work, Challenges at home, challenges with our government. All right, so we see all these things. But if we only focus on what we can see with our eyes, victory will only be temporary because there's going to be another battle coming. There's going to be another battle coming. 
It's like putting bubble gum in the Hoover Dam when there's a big hole in behind what you can see that small spot. It's not going to work. We can't, it'll only be temporary. But if you read about any war and, you, and wars down through the years, when the opposing army is able to surround the capital of the place the orders are coming from, they have a great advantage over the enemy. All right, so if we really want to get in the fight or to get in the battle, then we have to engage in the spirit realm that allows us to fight. Not just the effects of the war, but the source of the war. And the only way we're going to do that is when we, when we get on our knees and we fight our battles on our knees and we start asking God and we start fasting and we start praying and we start seeking His face and we start keeping our spiritual power charged up to where it's available to us anytime we need it. We can, we can pray and we can know the situation and we can see what's behind that situation. Everybody else around us may not be able to see it. But we can see it, and we know what's going on in the spiritual realm because God's showing it, showing it to us, and we can fight that battle. We can't fight it any other way. We can't fight it with our fists. It's just like swinging in the air. We can't fight it that way, but we can fight it through the power of the Holy Spirit. All right, to do this type fighting, you will see that the military <coughs> learns all about the location and the area they want to take. They start learning about it. They start planning it. They get the maps out. They've got the war room. They're in there looking at it. They're saying, okay, here's this, this, and this. We can come in this way. We can flank them over here. We can come this direction, and we can surround this city, and we can take this. <clears throat> but as we've seen in the scripture we read today, our battle is not against our neighbor. It's not against our spouse or our co-worker or, or our own fleshly weakness for that matter. All right, people are simply an avenue for the spiritual battle taking place in a higher realm. <clears throat> the heavens, a spiritual realm. That's where it's all taking place. That's where it's all being planned. That's where it's all going on at. So we are fighting a spiritual battle. You cannot fight it with conventional weapons. You cannot blow it up. You cannot shoot cannons at it. You can't shoot tanks at it. You can't shoot... Uh, even atomic bombs at it. That's not going to stop it at all. You can only fight a spiritual battle with spiritual weapons. That's what you have to have in your arsenal. Okay, the reason we would uh, rather do a battle in the physical realm because it's easier to fight what you can see. All right, but what we see is not what we're really fighting. All right, we, when we're wronged, we want, to get, we want something physical to go after. All right, I'm going to sue them, I'm going to hit them, I'm going to whatever. But doing this is like playing a video game. All right, you should do a lot of shooting and you hit a lot of targets, but you never really accomplish anything because that's, that's not where it's at. We're fighting something we can't see. Pastor Tony Evans again states, he says, whatever has gone on is going on or will go on in your visible, physical world is rooted in the invisible spiritual realm. All right? If you do not know how to navigate in the spiritual realm, then you cannot hope to truly fix anything in this realm, in this one that we're dealing with. So <clears throat> we have to learn to address the spiritual roots of any problem or situation or circumstance. We have to learn to pray about it. We want to have a quick reaction, and we want to jump on things. But sometimes we need to spend time in prayer about it, and we need to pray about it. God, show me what to do in this situation. Does that mean you spend all your time in your closet praying and you have no contact with people? No, we talked about that last week. If we're going to have spiritual power, we're not going to go off in a cave by ourselves and never be in contact with people because people need us as spiritual people to help them fight battles as well and show them the way. And we have to look back to Jesus and what did Jesus do? Jesus was out there among the people, so we're going to be Christ-like, and we know that he's able to take care of us. He's able to, to show us the way. He's able to, to move us forward in this battle, but you, need, uh, you may need to confront things at times, have serious conversations at times, and all while recognizing where the root of the problem is. It's a spiritual battle. So if you're actively engaged in a battle, in, a, uh, in the spiritual, you can move with confidence and power in the physical. So when you're confident in the spiritual, you're confident in the physical. You don't worry about it. Look at Paul and Silas and Peter and James and John and all these guys. They were confident in what they did. It didn't make any difference. They would take them up before rulers 
and uh, that was pushing uh, these issues, and it was a spiritual battle of fight. Do not talk about Jesus anymore. Leave here. And he says, who else are we going to talk about? We've seen it. We've, t- we've touched him. We know exactly what he's talking about. There's no power in any other name other than the name of Jesus. Why would we not talk about it? But because you understand that and are waging a war correctly, you can have, you can have physical effects through a spiritual battle. That's when you start to live life at a deeper level than most people around you. They may look at you funny. <clears throat> they may t- say, well, you spiritualize everything. But why do you spiritualize everything? Because everything really is spiritual. All right, here, here was a story about uh, a Bl- British evangelist Smith Wigglesworth, and he understood this very well. Smith woke up in the middle of the night from bad dreams, and once he woke up, he looked around and saw Satan himself sitting on the end of his bed. Now, this is the power he had in his life. He knew the, the spiritual battles he was fighting, so instead of being afraid, he looked at the devil and said, Oh, it's just you. And went back to sleep. That's how much confidence he had in his life and his walk with the Lord that he was he had his spiritual batteries charged up. He was ready to move forward. The enemy couldn't come against him. He knew what God had for him. And if God's for us, who can be against us? So we know that we have power through spiritual battles that we can fight these battles. All right? You may find yourself being discontent with minor wins. Well, that, you know, I want a big win. That was a minor win. But you've learned about spiritual victory through those small battles. All right, you will find that your enemy is very capable and is very dangerous. All right, you need the right stuff to arm yourself. In other words, you don't take a knife to a gunfight. You may have heard that said before. So let's go to Ephesians uh, chapter 6, and we'll start in verse 10 and 11. And here's what Paul told us. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. So we need to be strong in the Lord. You can't fight a battle if you're weak in the Lord, all right, in the, and in the power of not your might, his might, all right, put on the whole armor of God that you may, may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So we're in a physical battle, and, that, and he goes on the scripture we read at first, verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, all right, but against principalities, again, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Let's go to verse 13. He says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God. So he's told us this twice. Remember what we talked about, emphasis on Scripture? When you get told something twice, you need to pay attention. All right, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to, uh, having done all to stand. So sometimes if you can't do anything else, you just stand there. You ain't moving me. All right, I'm like a tree planted by the water. I'm not going to be moved. I've got deep roots in God. I'm not being moved. All right, let's go to uh, chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. He says, Stand therefore, having your waist, uh, having girded your waist with truth. So we've got to have truth in our life. We see that's one of our weapons that we're going to fight these spiritual battles with. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. We've got to live righteously. The scriptures we read of all the things that's not going to enter heaven, we can't live with those things in our life. We've got to live a righteous life. All right, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What is the, what is the gospel of peace? Jesus Christ and him crucified, and he rose again the third day, uh, and he seated at the right hand of the Father to make intercession for you and me. He, he died to save us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He said, it's not my will that, uh, it is my will that all come to repentance. So we, we see those things. That is the gospel of peace. That's why Jesus Christ came. That's why he died for you. That's why he died for me. And he rose again on the third day. All right, let's go to uh, chapters, or verse 16 and 17. He says, above all, Above all, take the shield of faith. We've got to have faith. How do we get faith? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. We've got to be in the Word of God. We've got to hear it preached. We've got to read it. We've got to pray about it. We've got to look at it and study it, not just, not just scan over the top of it and not come up and say, well, don't the Bible say? You need to know what the Bible says. All right, so uh, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, just like when Jesus was tempted he didn't fight the devil 
with, with his fist, but he fought him with the word of God. And when he spoke the word of God, the devil had to leave and take the helmet of salvation. You've got to be saved. You can't fight these spiritual battles without Jesus Christ in your life, without him living in your heart. You cannot fight them. You might still have to fight battles, but you can't fight them, uh, spiritually speaking, without Jesus Christ in your life. All right, and he said, take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Again, you've got to be in the Word of God. You've got to have the Word of God with you. You can't leave it at home. You can't leave it in the car. When you're out here fighting battles, it has to be in here that you're quick and that God will bring those things to your remembrance when you have to fight those battles that those scriptures will come forth. Let's go to verse 18. Prayer is a, is a, a big thing in all this thing. We can't fight these battles without praying, just like Daniel prayed. We can't fight these things without talking to the Lord. So it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. Sometimes the Scripture talks about praying. He, it says praying, and sometimes you don't know how to utter the words to pray, but the Spirit will pray for you. All right, but being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So we're going we're to pray for them too. Not just pray for ourselves. We're going to pray for each other. We're going we're gonna to fight this battle. If you was in an army and you, had, <clears throat> you were with a squadron and you're going somewhere, you want everybody to be intact. You want everybody to be fighting with you. You want everybody to be moving forward and pushing the enemy back. That's what we need to do as a church. We need to come together. We need to pray. I don't care if you're in this church, that church, or church down the road. We need to make sure that we're in sync together as church is, that we're fighting this battle together, not fighting against each other, but fighting with each other because <clears throat> we're not fighting against each other because we're, not, we're here to fight against an enemy called Satan, and that's why we need to move forward. We don't, we're not fighting against each other. There's plenty of sinners to go around. There's plenty of people to fill our churches. We don't have to battle it out with each other, and we're not doing that. We're going forward as the kingdom of God. So something you have to do is you have to feed the spirit man. How are you going to feed the spirit man? <coughs> Worship. Listen to worship music and get into worship and praying, seeking God. All right, <clears throat> you're going to get into the Word of God, and you're going to hide that in your heart. You're going to have it there. All right, keep your spirit charged. Stay charged up in the Lord. Understand what you're fighting against. That's one of the things we have to do. We can't see it, but we know what we're fighting against. And remember this, in 1 John chapter 4, in verse 4, You are of God, little children. And have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world if you've given your life to Jesus Christ. That's where we need to get to today. That's what we've got to be a part of. We've got to let the Lord have rule and reign over our life. And we've got to seek him in the song surrounded as we, as we had here earlier. That's how we fight our battles. That's how we get to where God wants us to be. You're going to have battles. To from now to the time you leave this earth, be prepared for the battle. It, what could be worse than going through a battle and you're not prepared for it? You don't have, uh, physically speaking, you don't have bullets for your gun. You may not even have a gun. You don't have a sword. You don't have a knife. You don't have anything, but you're going to go fight against an enemy that's equipped. You have to be equipped with the power of God in your life. Be full of the Spirit. Be charged up. Have that spiritual power working and churning in you to where you, that you know when you come against that enemy, you recognize the enemy, but you also put him to flight because he said if one could put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand. We can put the enemy on the move. We just have to do what God's told us to do to do that and be able to fight that battle. And we need to stay in training. We need to stay up to date on the word of God and what God's word's telling us that he will recall, we can recall it quickly and we can put the enemy to moving. We need to be there. But you can never accomplish this if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You may, be, you may be listening today and you don't know him as your Lord and Savior. You need to accept him today. You need to pray today and accept the Lord in your life. Then you can start uh, going into training till you can fight these spiritual battles in, in a godly fashion. Because you're still going to go through things. You're still going to have problems. You may think, well, I'm not serving the Lord, so I don't have to fight against the devil. The devil loves nobody. He wants to destroy everybody, regardless if you're a Christian or not a Christian. So you're going to have, have to fight battles regardless if you're saved or not saved. Why not fight them 
with, uh, with the Lord on your side in those spiritual battles because you've got the Spirit of God living inside you. So today as we pray, and we'll pray with you if you don't know Jesus Christ, as soon as we finish this prayer, but we'll ask you to pray with us. Let's pray today. Father God, we thank you, Lord, today as we come before you in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, our King, Lord, our Commander-in-Chief. We thank you, Lord, that, that you're showing us the things that we need to do, where we need to go, and that, that spiritual power, and that we're warriors in Christ, and we'll recognize these battles. Lord, that the Spirit will quicken each one of us, that we'll know that we know when we come up against a battle, Lord, what we're fighting against. We'll know how to pray. We'll know the Scripture to speak over this situation. We'll know exactly how to march forward, that we're going to tread over the enemy, and we're going to move forward, and he'll be under our feet. We need, to, we need that power in our life, Lord, and we're asking you right now to show us, that, Lord, your word and show us where we need to move forward. Lord, keep, uh, help us to keep our spiritual uh, warfare and our spiritual uh, equipment charged up, ready to go, ready to move forward. Lord, that we can win these battles, Lord, day after day after day, Lord, in you. And we thank you for that. And help us to be warriors. Lord, that, that not warriors that back down, but Lord, warriors that keep marching forward for the kingdom of God. And Father, I pray, Lord, if there's one person here today that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, Lord, we know they're going to fight battles too, but they need you on their side. And Father, I pray that you'd speak to their hearts right now, convict them that they know that they need you as their Savior. Lord, it may be somebody that's AWOL on God. It may be a deserter on God. But Lord, I pray that you would speak to that heart, Lord, today. Lord, that they would get back in the battle. They would turn their life back over to you. They would repent and move forward, Lord, in you. And we thank you for what you're doing for them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And Father, we, uh, right now as we pray this prayer, I'm going to ask you to repeat with me. If you don't know Jesus Christ, or maybe you're AWOL on the Lord, and you need to come back to him, and you need to get your life back right with him. Let's pray that prayer today. Lord Jesus, thank you that you're going to make me a warrior in you. I've given my life to you today. I ask that the old things be washed away. My sins be forgiven. And I'm giving my life totally to you. I'm joining your army today. And I'm going to follow you as my commander in chief. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, let somebody know. Tell them about it. Get in a good Bible-believing church. That's where you're going to get your training to fight these battles. That's where you're going to get your training to be a warrior for the Lord. You need to get in a good Bible-believing church that people can train you. Not just get saved, but you need to be a disciple or a follower of Jesus Christ. We'd love to have you here at Journey Church in Duffield, Virginia at 355 Cecil D. Quillen Drive. If it, we have services at 9 a.m. and again at 11 a.m. We also have live stream uh, each Sunday morning at about 9.15. And we also uh, have Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. live stream. So we'd love to have you with us and tell somebody that you got saved. And remember, you're a warrior in the Lord. Act like it. March forward. Don't let the enemy push you backwards, but keep moving forward. In Jesus' name, have a blessed day.